Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Well, folks, welcome to this oh, this dynamic show today, Oregon Voters Digest. Guess what? Look at it. Look at it. There it is right there, boy. Now we're really getting into the real serious point of the election. It's called Issues and solutions that's the bottom line so the bottom line we will be here until november or uh, through november okay the elections are january 1 that's when everybody takes their seat right is that that one idea and the bottom line is that we will be here we want to make sure that you know that we in fact are going to be here there you go so right up here it says vote for bruce Broussard and the oregon voters digest team and here they are right here. Boy, I tell you, this is the team that got us together. And one's off camera right now. We'll probably be getting her right off the bat. She got a haircut, so we can't let you see it. She might be just too exciting right now. <laughs> no problem. Anyway, folks, welcome. I don't, don't want to slight anything off or whatever, but, as, but I just wanted to share with you the fact that, uh, that in a primary, you have the opportunity to be personal. You can say anything you want to say. You have a number of folks that are sitting at the table. Uh, you've got, uh, and anyone can run for office. I mean, it's just a simple process. Uh, just a name, for instance, with mayor, it's a name, 50 bucks, and you're in, bottom line. Uh, so anyway, that's where we are at this point in time. But like I said, now we let's get serious and talk about the issues and the solutions. It's not about the individuals today, between now and the general election. It's about the issues and solutions. Yes, we've talked about those. We've, we've tried to do everything we can, could, if you will, to bring those issues and solutions to the table with an individual. But now, all of a sudden, we got to deal specifically with the issues. Now, as you know, we've got a national, we got a national, we got a, we got a, we got a presidential race going, we got a statewide race going, and then here locally in the city of Portland, uh, we've got, we had the mayoral race and city council race aspect of it, because that's where we are right now. And so we're going to probably focus just on that way, just backwards, if you will. We're going to do the city of Portland to begin with, and then we're going to get into the state, and then we're going to go into the national piece, and then we'll mix it up a bit. But we've got some time, six and a half months or so. Mm -hmm. So this time around, though, you got to get out and vote. You've got to read. you got to really pay attention, if you will, during the next six months to the issues, to the issues and the solutions that these individuals will be bringing to the table. Very, very important. Here in the Portland metropolitan area, uh, it has been said, everyone has looked at it as if to say that, well, Ted Wheeler, who was the selectee uh, during the primary aspect of it, uh, will be the, the, the selected mayor for January. He takes his seat in January. The mayor today is still Charlie Hale. He still has the keys to the city. So he need, hey, he's getting paid 24-7, and I've not seen any money come in my mailbox stating that he's out, and et cetera. No, the bottom line is that Charlie Hill is the mayor of the city of Portland until January 1. Ted Wheeler now is in the process of putting his plans together, putting his staff together, and right up front with you, trying to, to vet out, vet out, if you will, the, the, the last six months of, uh, of uh, Charlie Hill's position as mayor, if you will, and maybe picking out those things, if you will, that can relate to his plan and how he's going to basically make this city safe and clean and, and deal with whatever the issues we come up with at the end of the day. Okay, so with that, I've got my, my two formidable cohorts here with me today. As you can see, uh, I didn't wear my gear, but he's got his gear on. But the bottom line, I've got my veteran, i got my veteran, and then I've got uh, Teresa, who's, who's our, because she basically does our editing. They're all our, on the end within her and Kate. They do the only editing and so but, but anyway, she's written several books, and Don's Don's been part of that too. He's written a book or whatever. You've seen those, and in fact, in fact, they're a part of the issues that they were part yeah. and parcel. That's why we wanted to have him. Don, former Portland policeman, very very important, which is a major issue still in this town aspect of it. And he brought back some many many resources and and background in terms of bringing us with the history, if you will, of Portland police. And uh, I thought it was just great. So thank you, Don, for doing that You're piece. Welcome. Okay, fine. And then with his book, if you will, that that's a beautiful piece. Did we bring one today? No, we didn't, but we'll bring one to next week. week, week. And the second <coughs> edition came out. The second uh, edition? About a week and a half okay. ago. It's so, online on so, Amazon. Okay, so maybe we'll, I think we will bring yeah. that back up and have a discussion on that piece aspect. And then you, my dear, you've done your piece. Uh, we, we, we've you done two books. You were, you were associated with J.D., right? I co-authored uh, the Crime Street book with J.D. Chandler, yeah, that was Murder a good and piece. Scandal and Prohibition Portland, right. and I, I wrote a 
I published a book of poetry. Yeah, I thought that was really great. Really great. Thank you. Good job. Good job. <laughs> and thank you very much for She's being a part. She's a good poet. Oh, very much so. She's deep. Yeah, but I want to thank thank you all the team. I, I call this the team. And then, like I said, you got Kay Bridges out here. She's she's still doing her thing, and she did a real good job. I thought, mm -hmm. as far as Facebook is concerned, which is a tool. You know, in all due respect, that is the future. Mm -hmm. You know, because in all due respect, if you can't if you can't afford Comcast, you can't look at this show. But yeah. so the bottom line is that YouTube is the key. That that is the future. Yeah. And so we're we're sort of like uh, we're so thankful, if you will, that in fact we were part of that process, because as I as I filed to run for office, I indicated that I wouldn't pay, I wouldn't spend over seven hundred and fifty bucks, which is true, and uh, the results pretty well showed itself. Sure, I have I've had some background and some votes, but the bottom line is that uh, Facebook was very very important, yes. and it, and it's still there. So one can still reference, if you will, and we really, really dealt in and, and spent time on the issues, which I thought was really good. And we interviewed folks, and, that, and it's all there now. Uh, just for for your benefit, and especially for those who are who are new to the process and whatever, or even those who have been here, we want to we want to go back and kind of just talk to what you need to do in the future, especially the, very important for the next six months or so. We're talking about uh, the Oregon Voters Digest and how you can basically subscribe and get to the archives and things of that nature. But Facebook is the one we want to tell you point blank at this point in time. Just give you a little background on how you access this stuff. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring Teresa in and, 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 and she'll just share that with so, you. Go on, T. One thing that viewers can do is they can subscribe to Oregon Voters Digest videos on YouTube um, just by going to YouTube and just subscribing um, to the Oregon Voters Digest on YouTube. And uh, by doing that, they'll be notified via email uh, when all the um, upcoming videos are filmed and uploaded to YouTube. So okay. that's a good way to stay in touch. And how do they do that physically? Is it Oregon Voters Digest? Just go to YouTube, YouTube? and put in Oregon Voters Digest. Okay. It'll come up and then just click the little red box that says subscribe. Okay, cool, cool. Very, very important, folks. Very, very important, folks. And that'll give you an opportunity. That way you've got it. It's recorded. You don't have to worry about if you miss any shows, whether you're yeah. on Comcast or you're not on Comcast, right. you can go back and pick that up. Because yeah. it's going to be very important because we're going to definitely get into the issues, and, and especially between the, the next six months or so, and you get your voters' pamphlets aspect of it, you can use that as a guide, if you will. Because, again, too, you've got professional folks that are putting those pieces together. And yeah. trust me, we're going to talk a little bit about that because we saw some things that happened during the primary that, that you'll understand where we're coming from. But the fact of the matter is you got to go on and use the, um, uh, the Oregon Voters Digest and, and do subscribe on YouTube. It's, the little red button, like yeah. she says. It's becoming a lot more popular. Yeah, yeah. very much so. And that is the future. That is the wave yeah. of the future. And so it's very important. So we wanna, we, 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 we're very excited about the fact that, that we used it and it was very effective, and now you can use it, and uh, you can now say, well, hey, look, I got the background, and it's not, it's not that last moment I ain't voting for Mickey Mouse. Mm -hmm. You'll actually look at your voter's guide and really pick it up, okay? Very important. Okay, now, uh, what we'll, uh, I'll make mention now in terms of, again, like I said, I made the point about the fact that we're going to do the city at this point in time, and then talk about um, the city, and, uh, and, and then we're just going to go through some of the issues that we felt were, were per pertinent during that particular time. I had the opportunity to see uh, Steve Dean's uh, uh, show just today on Sunday. Uh, from I think it was about it was a nine o'clock show aspect of it. Your voice, your vote, and he had Ted Wheeler on, which I thought was very interesting. Was, that, was that Steve Dean or someone else? Steve Dean? No, it was, it was someone else. It was a oh. cohort of his. Oh, right, But it was right. his okay. show. Okay. Yeah. But okay. she was, she was. I don't remember the latest name, but anyway, she was interviewing Ted, mm -hmm. and I thought that was a very interesting one. I guess the only thing that I thought about that when I first saw it was that why is this guy? I mean, he was as if he's mayor now, and she was asking him questions as if he was mayor now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was that was one concern. And the other thing is that it was, it was a grueling race. You know, the guy does have a family, I and mean, he should have just taken off for a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. get together with his family, this, that, and the other, put his team together. That's what he should be doing within this next six months, or maybe even inviting all the candidates that ran for mayor, and you know, and interview those folks and find out, get a sense of what in fact were they bringing to the table mm -hmm. and then that way that becomes part of his his platform yeah because you know i tell you running for office and then then actually being selected to be that office that's a tough job mm -hmm. it is and there's gonna be all sorts of expectation because no no, no man's a, an island as one would say or no person is an island it's a tough tough situation running for office and then being taking that office over it's going to get worse it, it gets it, it's not going to get any better okay now the other main thing that we got out of this deal, and we want to have, we're going to start off this discussion with, is the whole issue of 
of how you pretty well persuaded, if you will, to vote and who pretty well controls the vote on the front end. That's the media. Mm -hmm. When you think about the media, the media itself. So we're gonna have a little discussion about what the media is all about. When you think, and I'm gonna throw this out right up front, is that, I mean, I would think that one of the questions that should be asked uh, uh, of the media is that I'd like to know what parties they're affiliated with. Mm -hmm. Are they Republicans, Democrats, Independent, Libertarians? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it does make a difference, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because those are some of the things that we're gonna be talking about right now. now Let's take this one. Let's talk. Let's talk about the city of Portland and how how do we feel? Uh, it was pretty well. Uh, let's say uh, it, it was a, as it was interviewed or, or this that. How, how did they fit in this whole process of the election for city city council people and even the mayor's race aspect of it? Mm -hmm. T, you got some points you want to want to talk well, about. Oh well, you know, um, I should probably say that um, I wrote two articles um, or one two articles that were published in Go Local PDX about um, this aspect of racism in the white establishment. Is that on Facebook or is that a... Is that a, it's, is it, I, yeah, they're on Facebook, they're, they're, on Facebook? On, they're on Google, they're on the, the Go Local website. Okay. But that's been kind of a, a recent interest of mine because I really, I mean, I've lived here my whole life and I know it sounds rather naive, but I really had no idea that there was such a prevalent amount of racism in Portland politics, but there is. And um, I have another article that's going to be published in the next week or week or two um, detailing that. But I was very disappointed in um, primarily in the article by Willamette Week about Fred Stewart and in the article by a dean of the Oregonian also about Fred Stewart, because those two articles were basically, um, in my opinion, tabloid journalism, yellow journalism. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, um, how do I feel about the ra the race? Um, disappointed, mm -hmm. disappointed in the white establishment in Portland because I think that there's a lot of, of hidden racism mm -hmm. in the white establishment in in Portland, specifically with regard to the media. And I think that that was expressed very well by both of those articles. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm very disappointed in Willamette Week. I'm very disappointed in Steve Dean. Frankly, I expected more from him. Mm -hmm. Um, that uh, that uh, opinion piece that he published, he had one source, basically, um, a 19-year-old girl who is probably not the most honest person at this time in her well, life. In fact, on the, on the, let's take one each. Let's take mm -hmm. each one of them. Let's, take, let's, let's start off with the Oregonian. <coughs> mm -hmm. let's, let's, Oregon, no, well, Lambert Week, that's where mm -hmm. it all started. Yeah, right? it started let's with Nigel with Jaquist. Nigel, Nigel Jaquist, he is a writer there. Mm -hmm. Of the surprise kind of yeah. person. Yeah, I, I published, um, I wrote an, uh, a, a commentary that was published uh, with Go Local PDX called Nigel Jaquist, uh, Willamette Week's Nigel Jaquist Journalism of Destruction. Um, I actually didn't title it, I had a much different, uh, much longer title, and um, the editor of the website uh, chose the title, which is a lot better. <laughs> um, and I basically um, you know, I, I wrote this commentary about the fact that Nigel Jaquist lied to Fred Stewart and that's what I would like to point out uh -huh. he lied specifically how what, he, what he told he came to his home when Fred had sprained his ankle so they couldn't mm -hmm. meet somewhere else and he said well I can come to your home and he told Fred that he wasn't going to be writing an article about him he lied but and why, was he, days, why, why was he doing that was he because going? I think he that was running, he, was I think that <coughs> his motivation is he's he was trying to to basically show that Fred Stewart is not suitable for politics so he 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 wrote this really despicable story about something that every parent of a teenager has probably been through and tried to create this archetypal um, personification of Fred as some kind of savage. And um, mm. I'm, I'm very disappointed in Willamette Week and very disappointed in uh, the Oregonian. Um, and for a time after my article came out um, and after Don wrote his opinion piece, mm -hmm. there was a real um, reversal and uh, um, people were calling Fred up and telling him, you know, I wasn't going to vote for you before, but now mm -hmm. I am. And he came in fourth. Um, he came in behind Chloe Udeley, which I found shocking because she's just so inarticulate and I think she's absolutely not suited for politics in any way. But um, it, I think that if, if I hadn't written that article, um, if Don hadn't written his, his opinion piece, I wonder where he would have come in. He may have come in fifth or sixth. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, that our articles were important because they're bringing to light this aspect of racism that is, is, you know, it it's simply it's alive and well. Yeah, it's yeah. alive and well in Portland. I mean, it's it's just a part of Portland culture, 
um, and um, I, I read this article, I think it was from 2013, Portland, it was called Portland is the most racist city in the nation or something mm, like yeah, that. And it makes sense because Portland's also the whitest city in the nation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we have a lot of white liberals who are talking the talk, claiming that they, su they support people of color, claiming that they value diversity and value inclusivity, but the reality is their behavior indicates otherwise because they're engaging in these microaggressions, they're mm -hmm. saying one thing and doing another, mm -hmm. and that was expressed very well by Nigel Jaquist and by Steve Dean when they wrote these articles about Fred Stewart because basically they wanted to destroy his political chances and to a degree they did. But what, if, what, what if they had just ignored him totally and not even interviewed him. I mean, almost in all due respect, like they did like me. me. I mean, yeah, it, it's just, just like with me. I mean, they totally just ignored me. I when think I was his chance. I think he would have gotten better. I think he would have. Yeah. Better yeah. numbers. I yeah. think he would have probably come in second. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 What, the, what the media did, in my opinion, in one fell swoop, mm -hmm. is they showed the racism by not including, and at the same time. The the uh, the voter didn't get to see the the widespread of candidates mm -hmm. available, right. which is it's like these two white guys are standing up there. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, one's got brown eyes, one got blue eyes, yeah. and politically they're not much different. Mm -hmm. But that was like that was their only choice. Mm -hmm. So they discriminated, which really made me mad, mm -hmm. and that's why I wrote about it. And at the same time, well, these are your only choices. Sorry, you mm -hmm. guys out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's about eight or ten people running for mayor, and yeah. we don't know about only two of them. Yeah, and and that's the kind of passive control that the white establishment and the white yeah. media exercises in the city of Portland. They do what they want, and they remain yeah. silent. The Will Willamette Week has no people of color in there. They, they don't have any writers who are people of color. They don't cover interests or subjects or topics that are of importance to people of color because they just cover special interests that affect white people. That's mm -hmm. all they really care about. I mean, Nigel Jacobs has proven that time and time again. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Fred told me about an article that Willamette Week wrote about 10 years ago. Um, it was an article about Lou Frederick and um, Lou Frederick's, I think it was either his grandfather. Who just elected senator too. His, right. his, his grandfather or great grandfather right. was a former slave. Mm -hmm. And so they used this photo from 1960 of this man who was a former slave who came to Oregon, mm -hmm. raised his children. They all graduated from college. He had a lot of kids, like six or seven kids. They all graduated from college. And Willamette Week wrote this article. And in the article, they mentioned in, the 19, in this photo from 1960 mm -hmm. of this man who was in his 90s, they pointed out that his fly was open. Wow. And Fred was so offended, he emailed the writer and he said, why did you do that? That's, mm -hmm. I mean, this is a former slave. What's, mm -hmm. the, what's the purpose of this? And I don't know if Jaquist wrote it or someone else, but the writer uh, responded to Fred and said, oh, we didn't mean to offend you. We didn't mean to offend anyone. Yeah, by, after the fact. But after how the fact, can you yeah. not offend <laughs> someone by only pointing out that this former slave, this hero who moved to Oregon and raised his children in Oregon and they all graduated from college, how could it not be offensive? Mm -hmm that they pointed out, oh, by the way, this old man's fly was open in mm -hmm. 1960 and he's in his 90s. I mean, it's absurd. Mm -hmm. So is there racism yeah. in the white establishment and white media? Yes, there is. And I'm only just beginning to see it. And so it's become kind of a recent thing for me. Um, <laughs> and of, I will continue to write about it. It, can, it. it disguises the problem because whoever becomes the next mayor mm -hmm. has got a hell of a problem yeah, here. Oh, big time. We've got big time problems. We've got caught problems with not having enough policemen. We have way, way, way too many homeless people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are, it's like in downtown Portland, there's not enough street corners mm -hmm. to go around for the people holding up signs yeah. saying, I need help. Um, there's just not enough, there's not enough places yeah. for people to go mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. And where are you going to put them? So we have a heroin problem. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. okay. We have a heroin problem. Half the people that you see downtown are nodding out on the street mm -hmm. corners. They're begging on the street corners. Uh, you can't walk down a city block without yeah. being spare change. Overdosing big time. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we have a lot of problems mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. and, and this media... Uh, focus on the wrong thing and didn't get to this. What are we gonna do about these problems? Right. We need more police. What are we yeah. gonna do about that? Yeah. Well, you exactly. know, you know. What do we do about these homeless people? Where are we gonna put I them? Agree. I agree. Ted Wheeler is gonna inherit a huge, He's huge a, problem. Yeah. Yeah. The city of Portland right yeah. now. It's worse than it's ever been. I'm, I'm we're gonna all have to, We're gonna all have to be there. Trust mm -hmm. me. Yeah. In all due respect, we're gonna all have to be there, and yeah. hopefully that's the role. 
We're yeah. going to be playing between now and November. We're going to make sure mm -hmm. we, yeah. we vet Charlie Hale a mm -hmm. little bit more, who is the existing mayor at this point in time. Mm -hmm. So if we can ease some of that problem, yeah. by the time January comes on yeah. and the new mayor takes takes over, mm -hmm. right. you'll have something to work with. Because right now there's a major divide, and like mm -hmm. you said, the media especially mm -hmm. is going to play a major role. Because like I said, I saw this show today uh, on, on, this, mm -hmm. on this particular network with Channel 2. Your voice, your vote. Mm -hmm. Steve Dean's people, someone I was interviewing. But the fact of the matter is, they were treating Ted like he was the mayor right mm -hmm, then and sure. there. Yeah. And he's not. Yeah. And he, the poor guy was just, he was basically going back to his platform. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, he didn't cover a lot of the issues. He never right. even mentioned Wapato. Right. You know, in all due respect, because the guy didn't have the time to do that. Yeah. He did all this by yeah. himself, yeah. whole nine yards. Yeah. So we got some very serious problems. And then, like you yeah. said, the race issue. And, and that's why we're talking about this issue. And the, the media is a very, very, they play a major, major role, yeah. major, major role in, in how we live and I, the whole nine yard about the issues and whatever. Well, we're, we're definitely getting same. involved. We're, we're I want getting, to know yeah. how, what, Peeler, what Ted Wheeler is going to do about the police culture. Well, in all due, if he's going to be the mayor. Right, right, right. How are you going to deal with this dug in police culture mm -hmm. that resists change yeah. mm -hmm. and has to be changed mm -hmm. but doesn't want to be changed? How are you going to deal with that? Yeah. No one so far, including Charlie Hales, has had the gumption. Well, let's ask him yeah. within this next six month period, Charlie Hales. Charlie Hales. We'll put it on How his back. Do? We'll put the heat on him. In are fact, we'll invite him to come more over. More of the same. Exactly. Exactly. You got a chief yeah. of police who shot somebody by accident. Exactly. Exactly. Remember that was the forty. Remember the forty-eight hour rule. They were talking mm -hmm. about the yeah, forty-eight hour rule. Yeah. You yeah. know, aspect of it. Well, then that was a major issue. Yeah. And then all can all of them, all of them, all all of them, I think. Uh, supported the fact they were to, it was going to get rid of the 48 hour rule. Mm -hmm. yeah. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. But then, but then on the other hand, you, you had, uh, who am I thinking about? Steve Bailey. Mm -hmm. uh, you, had, you had Bailey, and uh, he <laughs> was endorsed by the Portland Police Department, hmm. which I thought was very interesting. Yeah. He was endorsed by the Portland Police Department and had made the statement that, uh, in fact, he was kind of like laid back, so to speak. He, he didn't say that he was or he wasn't, and like he was. But then at the same time, it, 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 he said he wasn't. And then in his ads, on TV ads, which I thought was very interesting, he had the head of the NAACP endorsing him. Mm -hmm. Here's a person endorsing a person that had been endorsed by the police department. And I know Joanne has worked very, very hard in trying to bring these issues to the table. But there she was. She was endorsing Bailey mm -hmm. for mayor. And the same thing with Loretta Smith. Same thing. He had her up there doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought there was some precarious positions, you know, to be mm -hmm. put in, the, in that position. Uh, you know, you asked the question, well, why did these two individuals were out there endorsing, endorsing uh, uh, Bailey along that particular line? Got me? Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is another thing that comes up with a divide. We, we in all due respect, and from a black community standpoint, I was running for mayor. I was never interviewed by the black community. Mm -hmm. I wasn't interviewed by the black press. Where are they? I mean, in all due respect, they're sitting right here. Why aren't they doing anything? <laughs> Unfortunately. Well, you know, again, like you said, this is, a, this is a racist city aspect of it. And we have a few, but in all due respect, how do you respond? I mean, I've, yeah. I mean, I, you know, my, one, of, one of the individuals that were here with me for quite some time, and he's been on the show many times over, and Bob, Bob Williams. You know, we've talked yeah. about the issue, too. But, but the issue keeps going and going and going and going. Mm -hmm. And you're constantly bringing the issue at the table. And it puts a lot of pressure on some of the folks who are supposed to be in a leadership type role, and they're not listened to, like you said. See. I think that um, Don made a really good point when he mentioned um, the new mayor's uh, approach to um, the police department and understanding police culture. And my my feeling is police culture is extremely complex. Oh, it is. And I don't think that Ted Wheeler has a clue about no, police culture. No. I really don't. And my he prediction, does not. my prediction is that he won't be able to deal with the police department or any kind will? of. But then who will? T? I don't We're know. We're gonna have to be involved. That's why I'm saying <laughs> we got to put pressure on Charlie Hill before he gets mm -hmm. out of here. Yeah. The yeah. guy's got to be held accountable. Yeah. He's still the mayor of this city. Mm -hmm. And if that's the if that 48 hour issue is an issue, then you bring him on the table and yeah. you may make. I mean, he's not gonna change in the next few months. I think he said that the, the chief of police shot the guy. He said, well, I'm sorry. Sure, he's sorry about it. Mm -hmm. So what do we do, Don? What do we do? What do we do? What do we with do? The, which particular one? With the chief? Well, no, no, with the Charlie Hill. Uh, well, Charlie Hill <laughs> is just wait him out because he's a lame duck. And he's he. no matter what we say, he can say, 
I don't care. I'm gone. Well, why don't we get He's the money? Up. Up. Why don't we just take the keys away and give it to Ted? Okay. Dillard and start we that way. Can we do it well. that way? Yeah, we should. I mean, if I give it, give it to Bob Williams. I know, I know Big Bob. Big Bob's ready to go. He's ready to take care of some business. Yeah. I know Bob is ready. <laughs> I think that when it comes to the police department, um, the issue is we need more officers of color in North and Northeast Portland. Portland Police Bureau simply must recruit more officers and maybe make it a little easier to recruit officers. The other thing is we're dealing with an issue with regard to police culture that's national and and the that, issue is dis, the, the issue is they're 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 disengaging they're 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 not performing because so many police officers are afraid if i go out there and actively yeah. do my yeah. job and and get rough with people and put hands on people and try to arrest i mean their job is to arrest people their job is to arrest criminals they right. they're so afraid that they're yeah. going to get in trouble i mean there was that detective in texas who got pistol whipped because he said i hesitated mm. this guy was harassing him and he said i i hesitated because i was afraid that if i if i fought him i would end up on the news mm -hmm. and he hesitated just long enough for this guy to grab his gun mm -hmm. and then pistol whip him with it mm -hmm. so we're dealing with with yeah, two yeah. really extremely complex con yeah. you know issues the the fact that we need more officers mm -hmm. of color and the fact that portland police officers must be supported yeah, yeah they yeah, need yeah. to be supported so they can do their job right right now let's, I'm, I'm gonna bring john in and the way i'm gonna bring him in on this deal you know we've gone through this whole active recruiting yeah of people of color black folks yeah and then we get them on the force yeah and they're treated worse than the white cops by the same <laughs> individual that said we need more more blacks on the police force sure and in this particular city we're beautiful it's a healthy of a deal in this town the president of the union if you will we this perception that that the, the police runs the city yeah. happens to be a black american yeah we got a black police officer who's chairman who's who's the president of the union and 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 the, and the bottom line is that people are reacting to him in a very negative way. So someone has to get to the table. They should be at the end of the day when they get when they get through going through that training, they're now officers who happen to be people of color. Okay. We've got to get to that particular yeah. point. But right now, it is totally in confusion. You know, I mean, in fact, I'll, I'll ask Don: Do you think the black officers were basically uh, when they, when they get get on the force aspect of it, they could actually be officers just like anybody else, arrest anybody, or this, that, and the other? Oh, what, sure. What's your thought? What's yeah. your thought, Don? They're going to have to prove their chops. Okay. Okay. Just like all the cops prove okay. their chops. Okay. Okay. When you're when you're a newbie, you you make your you make right. your way. Right. Right. And if they're a good cop, then they're going to be accepted. Okay. If they're not. They're gonna they're gonna have some harassment for white policemen. There's no mm -hmm. doubt about that. But still, they gotta prove their chops, mm -hmm. like the Duke brothers. The did. Duke brothers. Well, you had, you had Bogle in there. I mean, you got all kinds yeah, of folks, yeah, right? Yeah. But they all fall in that same yeah. arena. I, I right. think one of the problems with Daryl Turner is he's criticized for not doing enough mm -hmm. by the black by right, black people right, in Portland. Right. And if he does too much, if he's too aggressive, then he'd be criticized by the white people because, I mean, we all know how um, the one police chief. Uh, uh, what was his moose was not treated very well by yeah, the media yeah. and he was described as terse and impatient and it was because a lot of times he would give press conferences and the media would ask stupid questions and it's like how do you explain to a non-law enforcement person 25 years of law enforcement in five minutes and that's yeah. one of the problems yeah. that police yeah. officers face they get really impatient because so many civilians don't even try to understand what the challenges are yeah. of working as a law of working as a police officer they don't try to right. understand those challenges well, you know we've been a lot of like time if you yeah. say one more time why didn't you shoot somebody in the knee mm -hmm. but, right right yeah yeah, yeah. 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 why yeah. didn't you do this why didn't yeah. you do that i think there's this thing people think that police work is some kind of straightforward thing because it's just a, a couple people fighting mm -hmm. it's this physical combat thing and so people think well why didn't you just do this well why didn't you just it? well yeah. why because there are studies to prove what works and what doesn't work mm -hmm. and it is Bottom line, it's police science, and too many civilians just don't understand the really specific elements of, of combat. It's not easy. It's not straightforward. It's really, it's really complex. That's a very tough job. She yeah. asked me one day a while back, how often were you assaulted? Mm -hmm. Every day. If you, if, you know, if assault is having to put some hands yeah. on someone right. or having somebody put hands on mm -hmm. you, as a policeman, a street policeman, I was assaulted every day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. part of the job. Well, that, that, that's part of the job. And, and in all due respect, the, 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 the deterrent factor yeah. is major in that <clears throat> yeah. area. Mm -hmm. I mean, the person has to physically look like someone that could yeah. take charge of this whole deal. Yeah. Right. One by himself, by in, in, in a car, yeah. by yeah. himself. Yeah. And you got four or five people out there and say, hey, look, go out there and tell these people kindly 
yeah. will you please stop doing what you're doing and put the knife down, right? Yeah. Put the knife down. <laughs> put the please. knife down, please. Okay. Uh, don't you know? He's had people try to assault him with a knife. He's had people, sp count countless times, people have spit on him, tried to smear their blood on him. I mean, just really awful things. And um, he two two times he was, uh, you know, had a person with a knife try to stab him. Um, but, yeah, I think that we have some specific issues in Portland. Number one, we need more officers of color for North and Northeast, and we need to support our officers so that they are not afraid to do their job. And they need to be supported in other ways, too, because the reality is after five or 10 or 15 years of the job, they end up with PTSD. They end up burnt oh, yeah. out. They oh, stop yeah. caring. Yeah. You know, so we That's need to. That's part of my five-year plan: retire yeah. Yeah. officers at 15 yeah. years yeah. because yeah. they're no good to you after yeah. that. Yeah. 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 yeah, I can still remember when Captain Smith asked me to, mm -hmm. Bruce, well, uh, you know, why don't you come on out and Marine? You want to be in the community and this, that, and the other. Why don't you join the force? Mm -hmm. I said, but I can't. I, I can't deal. What, what's that? What's that act that you have to do? You have to. Uh, you know, if you get spit on or something, you can't do anything. What, what's what's that? Act like a social no, worker. No, what's that act? What's, what's that? What's that one <laughs> policy that says something about the? Uh, it's a it's a universal thing know. that you have to sign off on. That uh, something about he was. Anyway, I I, I I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it either. No, I couldn't do it. But you did. But you know, you stayed in it for a while, for a minute. Well, back in the day, we used to be able to wear slap gloves. Yeah. Okay. Good on me. That's better than shot. Okay, I'll tell you what, on that particular note, why don't we take a short break and we'll come back with you, okay? All right. <laughs> You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Okay, we're in a deep discussion now. This is the prelim, if you will, of getting into the general election. Again, like I said at the beginning, this is about issues and solutions. It's not about personalities anymore. It's about issues and solutions. And we're going to all have to be involved, if you will, mm -hmm. if, in fact, we're going to have to have a safe city, a clean city, and a lot of the things that we're, we're concerned with at this point in time. So we're going to have to spend our time together, and that is educating oneself, about what the issues are and the way we're going to be doing that, i.e. through the Oregon Voters Digest. You can reference things back through the whole six months or whatever. So when you get that voters pamphlet, you'll have some idea in terms of what that person is who's going to be representing those issues are all about. And we can make it. And also the press, same thing with the media. They also need to be able to be a part of this process because they are just one minute kind of shots, routine, routine. They don't have the background, but yet and still they have that lead. And that can be deceiving at times. So that's why it's so important that we get the masses involved on what these issues are and the solutions that we're talking about. And as a, as a way of doing that, we're talking about the subscribe to the Oregon Voters Digest. And T, go, go through that one more time. And I'll so you can subscribe to Oregon Voters Digest on YouTube. And um, if you do that, you'll get an email notifying you of the new um, videos that are filmed and uploaded. So just go to YouTube and subscribe. put in Oregon Voters Digest and then click on the little red box to That's subscribe. Right. That's right. And by the way, if you're not familiar with a computer, you can always go to the library. If you're a senior citizen, a lot of times they'll, they'll give you a computer and they'll work on it a little bit and pay, let, them, let them know, put it on the big screen and everybody looks at it. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> well, this is baby boomers time at this point in time and, yeah. and right up front with you, they need to be very much involved in it because seniors were totally left out of the mayoral race yeah. in questions this time around. And in some ways, the veterans were. If it wasn't for mm -hmm. thanks for serving, yeah. they wouldn't have even been at the table, too. Yeah. I mean, we've been wearing the gear. That's, what, that's why Don's he's got his gear. I've got my gear on aspect of it. We've got some major, major, major issues. So we've taken the first step. 
from the standpoint of saying by saying, okay, thanks for serving, recognizing the fact that the veterans did participate. You know, we were somebody that, hey, that's, that's why we, we're here today. We, we don't have the problems we have in the, around the rest of the world aspect of it as much as we, we don't have aspect of it. But the fact of the matter is at least it's a start. And so all we need to do is just apply that to all our citizens, mm -hmm. and then we'll, we, we'll come out of this thing pretty fair. And we haven't gotten to that point where we can really fall off the cliff here in Oregon, yeah. and even in Portland for that matter. But guess what? It's just right around the corner. I mean, everybody, I mean, people are finally figuring out what Oregon was all about. I mean, I can still remember Tom McCall and, and the, the old signs in the visit, but don't stay. And it was always there. And then, and then Vic Atiyah pulled the sign down. And now all of a sudden, uh, I'm thinking that we may have to bring it back. Yeah. You know. But anyway, that's where we are. So make sure you, you check out the Oregon Voters Digest, I can say, on the computer. Or if not that, you, it was the, the smartphones, you get, you know, all, the, all the young people, especially young people, especially young people. Hey, I know you. I know you use this stuff day in and day out, every day aspect of. Just spend a couple minutes, if you will, just checking out to see what what are the issues are, so that you'll be able to articulate what problem. Because hey, it's your future. You're gonna have to be involved in this process. You know, here we are sitting around here. We're at the end of this piece at this point in time, but we're here. We want you, we want young folks to be sitting around this table talking about these issues aspect of it. So it's very important that you check out Oregon Voters Digest on, on YouTube. And you know how to do it. I don't even have to tell you how to do it. Because once you get out there, you'll know more than me. It's like more than K. <laughs> but anyway, that's where we are. Now, we've been talking about um, uh, the issues aspect of it. And uh, like I said before, uh, we're going to be vetting. We're going to be vetting uh, Charlie Hill. He's still the mayor of this city. Remember, he is still the mayor of this yeah. city. This is not <laughs> vacation time. This is not taking a whole bunch of trips and then saying, well, I'm going down to, to Taj Mahal to, to talk about education or this, that, and the other, or talk about homeless and whatever. No, we're talking about you're, you're being in that seat, that seat right here in Portland, Oregon, for six months or so, and hopefully giving Ted the opportunity to get in there and, and vet him to get an idea so he can come up with his plan because once he sits in that seat, it's all on his back and right up front with you. We got to be part of that, the population as a whole. That's what we've been talking about. So, well, one of the things we on. need to do, the next mayor needs to do, is get rid of that stupid gas tax. The gas tax? Yeah. How did that about, pass, Don? Let's, let's talk about Did you the vote gas. for that? Are you, didn't you, that pass? It passed, didn't it? That's right. You, it, didn't get it your, did you don't get your gas in Portland anyway, right? If you, if you stand no. at the top of the hill <laughs> on Sylvan yes. and watch all the people coming from Hillsborough. And that area be your head up so in, see your eyes. into Portland. There you go. Into you Portland, go. you see that all these people are going downtown to Portland to go to work. None of them are buying gas in Portland. Wow. None of them. Hey. So I think the whole gas thing they figured out they're going to what five hundred million dollars to. Where did they get those figures? Hey. I don't buy gas in Portland. I live in Beaverton, like hundreds of other people do. None of those people buy gas in Portland. Gas in Beaverton is about twenty two twenty nine a gallon on an average. Mm. I don't know how much it is in Portland, but I'm not. But with that ten, but, with, but then with that ten cents, you're gonna be putting people out of business. Yeah. Yeah. What is they're gonna be is putting out of business. You know, you know, here we are trying the to create tax, business. The whole idea about the gas tax, the gas it's, stations. It's a boondoggle. Yes, yeah. right. Wow. Wow, we got a gas tax that's gonna fix the roads. No, it's not. Bicycle lanes. And what it's going to do is it's going <laughs> to business is going to be booming in Beaverton. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's going to go to Beaverton to get their gas, just like people living in, in Washington would drive across the bridge and do their shopping the, in, yeah. in Portland as opposed to Vancouver. Well, maybe we'll finally get self-serve <laughs> here in the Portland area. <laughs> no, <laughs> because the money. Right? No. They're going to be self-serving now no. over here. No, huh? nothing I'm to too do. Old pump gas. Is that what? It is? <laughs> you want to pump gas? I'm too old to pump no, come gas. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Now that's okay. Okay, with the gas thing. So how do we go? How, how, how are we going to get rid of it? In Portland. Well, I, the new mayor should lobby against. Don't buy it. gas in Portland. Don't buy gas in Portland. Don't buy yeah. gas in because Portland because it's not doing any good. Yeah, just like the people in Vancouver yeah. said, uh, okay, fine, you buy alcohol yeah. in Portland, right? right? right. Or you don't food. buy alcohol. Do you you come over here, you buy them. Okay, good. Yeah. That, that's the name of the game. My brother right? did that for so, twenty years. So, so if you want to get rid of the uh, the gas tax. You don't buy gas in Portland. Come I know I'm not going to buy. Go to Beaverton, <laughs> got me. Or uh, if you get closer to, you know, to Jansen Beach, you can just jump right across the bridge and you can do it over there too. Yeah. Okay, so that's 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 the deal. Okay. Now let's talk about the Wapato deal. That, that's the interesting thing. That wasn't on the table. You know, we did everything we could mm -hmm. to try to get the Wap. I mean, uh, let's see, a half a million dollars a year to maintain. It's a lot and of that's money. ten years. <clears throat> that's five million bucks. Now well, the city owns it. The city owns it, mm -hmm. and it's still fighting over the sheriff thing. You know, they're still trying to get this guy uh, that, that, that's been elected 
by the citizens to all of a sudden be appointed. What do you think about that? Should he be appointed? No, it's illegal for one thing, because the law says that anybody that's going to be the sheriff has to have been a cop. Right. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's the bottom okay. line. All right. And the other reason is that the sheriff is the only elected official in the entire county that's beholden to no one mm -hmm. except the voters mm -hmm. who put him in office. So he's unique in that position. Well, wait a minute. You've got five officers on the city council, on, on the county right now. Okay. Police officers. There are yeah. five of them. Yeah. you got four women and one, one male. Yeah. Right? Officer, police officers. Are officers. they police officers? Yeah. They are. But they can't be. In other words, under. Are they police? They're not police officers. Not I'm sorry. Officers, I, 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 I used the wrong thing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like, about that. <laughs> the county wants to have the sheriff position appointed, and that's dead wrong. It yeah. is. It's, it, it's really it's wrong. wrong. Does the people really understand that? Do they really understand No, they that? don't understand the power of the sheriff. In fact, the sheriff doesn't understand how much power he has. Mm -hmm. Sheriffs have a lot you know, of power. There are very, very few sheriffs that do understand that. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was that one sheriff, remember? There was a sheriff back in Michigan, I think it was, right. that, who was uh, one of his, one of the farmers that lived in the county was being harassed by the, uh, by the uh, EPA about uh, how, they were, how they were not so they were selling milk mm -hmm. that wasn't pasteurized. Mm -hmm. they, they were an so organic they, farm. So they organic farm. So they kept coming in and and harassing them. Right. And coming every couple of months with, well, we need to look at your equipment and your farm yeah. and this. And the guy complained to the sheriff, and the sheriff says, you guys can't come back here and do any of that. Yeah. You have yeah. to have a warrant yeah. signed by a judge to go on this man's property. Right. Yeah. And you have... <clears throat> Excuse me, and you have to call me and tell me when you're going to be in the county. Right, yeah, right, he, right. He, he exerted so his he power. So he successfully yeah. kicked the kicked the federal government out of the county, and mm -hmm. the sheriff can do that. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. Sheriffs don't realize their own power. I ran for sheriff in 2006. I remember. So I know. You got interviewed right here. You should have won. We talked about yeah. Wapato Jail yeah. back then. Yeah. yeah. 2006. Yeah. This is 2016. All that well, money. Well, now the city owns it. Now the, now the city, city owns it. Somebody's and then naturally, owned it. Wheeler is supposed to basically work with the county, which is Kaforid, right? At one time, he was the boss at the county. Yeah, but was. at the same time, they voted against him. Yeah. They, yeah. They, 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 got, they, they took, uh, what's his name? His name is uh, Steve, uh, what, what's his name? What's the guy's name? The guy who ran for mayor. Gee whiz. I, I, Bailey. 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 Yeah. Oh, Jules Bailey. <clears throat> yeah, they all voted against the guy. You know what I mean? The mm -hmm. guy's running for mayor. So now, yeah. where's the relationship now? You yeah. see, what's going on? Yeah. Now, the county's now going to be in charge of the, they got the WAPAPO. Now they got the appointment of the sheriff aspect of it. So where does the city fit? I, I just have to say that I think that um, having a Do sheriff. Do they understand that? Uh, having the, the sheriff be an elected position is so wrong. Oh, it's wrong. It is so wrong. No, it, so right. No, uh, right, elected through the voters, yeah, but yeah, not yeah, an appointed, yeah. right. Through, right, 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 right. not an appointed position through city officials. Because the reality is, if that happens, there's so much room for conflict of yeah. interests. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. And the the sheriff needs to always be a, an elected right, position right, right. through the by like the voters. Say, they're an officer. They're and police officers. They're, they're police. Yeah. They're police aspect. Yeah. Them. And the other thing about that whole piece, they don't know. Yeah. This, a lot of people don't understand that. They let Jesse Sponberg run for sheriff right. in, yeah. in 2014. That's he wasn't absurd. Poor. Who let yeah. him in? Yeah. How did he get on the ballot? Yeah. He was never a policeman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. never. So well, who pays attention to yeah. that stuff? Well, Nobody but you and me. And the media, supposedly. <laughs> yeah. See, that's the problem. See, even right now, uh, the, the, the big squabble now is the fact that supposedly uh, Deborah Kafori and the sheriff are squabbling with one another. Yeah. And it was just discovered that now all of a sudden they want his car. Yeah. You went and got him a new car. Yeah, I read about I that. I mean, I could care less about the car as long as you do the job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want you to be comfortable. Let's put it that way. Yeah. He's the sheriff. He's the administrator aspect of it. But to play it on it, what about Wapato? Yeah, what about they know Wapato? about Wapato. We had, we had <clears throat> one of the commissioners, uh, Bailey, <clears throat> running for mayor, who was sitting on the couch that knew about Wapato. Mm -hmm. yeah. Didn't say a word about Wapato. And all due respect, even Ted. Because at one point, Wapato was the same situation when he was chair. Yeah. So he yeah, should have, exactly. he's, he's got to have some answers too. But right now, yeah. right now, hey, uh, get your things together, uh, Ted. But the bottom line, Charlie, we want to know about what's, what's Wapato yeah. right now. Yeah. What are you going to do with Wapato? Yeah. When are you going to get together with something Deborah before it? You got to do something yeah. about the homeless. Right. People want to make sure these people are off the street. Yeah. Yeah. The place got to be clean and we got to have law enforcement. Which is right off the bat. What are we going to do with all? A lot of the cops just want to retire now. They want out. So what are we going to do with that? How, how are we going to how are we going to address the police shortage? How I shouldn't yeah. you do that, Don? I was thinking out loud the other day. Back when I was a street cop in the '60s, 
Begging on the street corner was against the law. Mm -hmm. And we did arrest people and put them in jail mm -hmm. for it. Looking back now, was it a good idea? Well, it got them off the street. Mm -hmm. It got them a meal. And it got them out of sight. Mm -hmm. So was that a good thing? I good don't thing. know. I, I don't that have was an good. answer hey, That's that. what we're trying to do now. Under my mirror, well, that's exactly what I was going to do. So we're going to go back to that? No. I don't think so. No, when I say go back, the idea is that we don't know who's on the street. The, we and the, First the, off, the we don't know. Yeah. The logistics are different because when you were a street cop in 61 to 67, there were infinitely less homeless people on the streets of Portland than there are yeah. now. Well, and the, the population there was a of Portland. There on every street corner. Yeah. Right, 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 I mean, right, if, right. if we arrested all the homeless people in Portland, we'd have close to 5,000 people. But we don't know. Wapato would be full. <laughs> no, no, but he'd uh, be happy. But see, but Don, <laughs> the people that I've interviewed, I interviewed folks on the street, you know, mm -hmm. the mayor. I mean, a lot of those folks have homes here in Portland. Yeah. They just say, man, I just like to hang right here. Yeah. I got a little PTSD. And, you know, I mean, I got, yeah. I, got a, I got in a fuss with the old lady, and I'm gone. You know, I'll go down there and shoot the breeze with the guys and play some yeah. dominoes and socialize. Yeah. And socialize a socialize. little bit. You know, yeah. do a little yeah. drinking and whatever. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, again, like I said, we still don't know. And I asked that question for the time that I ran from here. Every time I turned around, running down to City Hall and asking folks about, well, okay, fine. Can you give me the number? How many homeless do we have? Yeah, they and they homeless. still have the big question mark. Well, homeless, they need more housing. Do they need a home or do I, they I need an apartment? It? There's a difference, you know. Yeah. I think there's between three and 4,000 No, but you don't know that. Yeah, I know, I don't. <laughs> they throw and that they number either. out. They just throw it. They don't know. They don't, yeah. know. they don't know. I mean, you got you got Dan Salzman, who happens to be the housing czar. You know, the only thing I know about Dan is that I noticed in the one last week he's making one point, he, he made 1.2 million bucks last, last year. Uh, was that is that the salary of a city council person? I mean, I don't think so. No, I don't, I don't know where I can. <laughs> but he's the housing czar. I mean, that, I think he owns property. He own, oh, yeah. owns property. How did he get that? Uh, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm reading from the Willamette Week. You know, the mm -hmm. uh, the other fish wrapper now. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm the, oh, back, and are they I, I'm, ever I'm a fish Lars, wrapper? Lars Larson. Yes. I was always <laughs> the other fish wrapper. I, I always had problems with Lars <laughs> making the point about the fish wrapper of the Oregonian. You know? So he's dropping. I'm picking it up. Bruce is picking it up. The fish wrappers. Oh, here they are right, right here, boy. We're going to get something done for a change. And uh, uh, that stays uh, on the show now. The fish wrapper. Whenever we talk about rapper. them. Until these yeah. folks get their act together and start That's dealing with are. these issues together. Because maybe that, maybe that, I don't know. I, I, I may have to get, get on the show with Lars and talk to him about that. Because I may have to get, because he's probably got that thing patented. I mean, to get the right to be able to use the word... Lars, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry I made that point. I will not use fish wrapper until I've gotten you got me okay from you. It's a part okay. of it's a part of our, our, and, and, our culture. Is our culture it's now? It's a part of popular okay, culture. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, euph Lars, euphemism. Okay. Or so, Lars, please, I will be talking to you next week about this whole issue of the fish wrapper. Yeah. Okay, fine. But anyway, I got problems right now because the media is going to have to stick, get on board. And I'm mm -hmm. not trying to knock them personally, but the bottom line is that their supervisor, whomever, is going to have to do something. And I'm, mm -hmm. I, I might, I want to give a few kudos, if you will. The OPB, remember, we yeah. went down to OPB about uh, <clears throat> about dealing with some of the issues. One was the veterans issue aspect of it and senior citizens. Yeah. I can still remember when Dave and I was down there doing golden hours. And I did that for about five years or I so. I was interviewed on yeah, Golden yeah, Hours. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I was. Oh, yeah, we had some good time doing Golden Hours. You know, my, my wife was writing articles about, uh, about uh, hygiene and food stuff and this, that, and the other, which was really great. But now they don't even have seniors at all no shows yeah. none whatsoever yeah. nothing on veterans <coughs> nothing at all and she had a lot of reasons why that yes. was but, but boy they're getting into the big time fish wrapper type stuff yeah. <laughs> they're getting into the new business i mean uh, <laughs> they've got two people that came from the from the oregonian uh, in uh in uh anna anna griffin. anna griffith yeah, anna, anna griffith oh anna griffith boy she's a dear friend I may have to re <laughs> renew my uh, my involvement with Anna Griffith. I remember she she got the public surprise, if you will, from me because I was able to give her some information about an issue. But I won't remind you of the issue at this point in time. It's going to take us a couple of hours, a couple of shows. I would I would bring it up to you up to the day. Maybe we might get a book out of the deal aspect of it. And then there was Steve Steve Mapes, right? Is it Jeff Mapes? Jeff Mapes. Jeff, Mapes. Jeff Mapes. Yeah. He's at the OPB to Oregon Public Broadcasting. In fact, I listened to the show because boy, they really oh, they're just so aggressive and whatever, and Steve in one of the interviews made the point about the fact that, well, you know, the Oregonian has gotten to be more conservative now. We are liberal over here. Really? Oh, really? He didn't say liberal, but he said conservative. I said, where did that come from? Well, it's always been conservative, Oregonian. No, but, he, but he's yeah. been there for years, and yeah. so now I understand why he was bashing, if you will, those mm -hmm. Republicans. He could never talk to me. He couldn't even talk to me. Mm -hmm. For some strange reason, I called him. I remember calling him when I filed to run for mayor. I said, well, I know, I know Mr. Mapes. 
and I can mm-hmm. give him a call down at OPB, and he'll, you know, he's a very seasoned uh, journalist, if you will, and he will say, oh, fine, Bruce, let's sit down and talk, and, and you know, we know about your background and whatever. Maybe we'll set up an interview with you, because that's a, my, I just want to talk about the issue. The guy never called me back. Never called me back. Yeah. And if Anna, uh, I mean, I can still remember the time when Anna said, Bruce, I will do anything if you give me the story. And she said, I'll get you, I'll put you in the Oregonian. Every day I was running for, I was running against Earl Blumenauer, the, you know, yeah. the hoop guy. Mm-hmm. But anyway, but anyway, never, never call me. So did you give her information and she never got back to you? Never got back to me. In yeah. fact, they were the one that did the poll and said that I was number three at one point in time, but I still never got the call. Mm-hmm. call. Yeah. Everyone else got the deal. But anyway, but Anna, trust me, uh, we will do the fish wrapper on the OPB uh, <laughs> media piece and kind of share with the public about our relationship, my dear. <laughs> Welcome to the crowd. Fish wrapper. <laughs> Boy, that's going to be a good one, too. And maybe she'll, maybe that'll give a little enthusiasm to get on the issues we're talking about. This is not a personal deal. It's not a personal attack. Sure. I just want to get the point across that we got some real issues here in the city yeah, of Portland and in the state. And we've got to all be together. And the idea is that make sure when you start doing the renews and talking about the issues and whatever, it's about the issues, not this fluffy stuff right. and playing games, okay? And it's about, it's about covering you know stories, what you did of wrong? Su- stories of substance. What did you I did, do wrong? You, you didn't put on a bicycle helmet. Is that what it was? And go bicycling <laughs> with the guys. Is, is that what it was? That's, what, that's where you messed up in your uh, campaign is, is so that, far. Is that what it was? So far. <laughs> Gee, but, Maybe but, we should both go bicycling like well, Ted Wheeler. Well, 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 <laughs> well but the one thing that I, I thought at one point in time. We could ride the Springwater Trail. I called him up at one point in time. Remember they did that one deal with the naked deal with the bicycle? Yeah, deal? yeah we can go to that. They, they, they wouldn't let me go. A lot of the guys said no. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Boy, what a day. But this is but anyway, man, I realize we got another on this other subject aspect of it. But you're right. About the bicycle. But I'm not I'm not anti any bicycle aspect of it. Either. But the fact of the matter is they don't pay anything. I mean even, <laughs> we, we, all this striping and stuff like that, all this congestion and this, that and the other uh, to accommodate one small group, give me a break. I'm a senior citizen. I need a mm-hmm. tricycle. Mm-hmm. I need a tri bike, if you will. <laughs> that means you got to widen up the lanes aspect of it. So we got to restrike the stuff. You got mm-hmm. me? So they're not paying a dime. They should at least pay at least ten bucks, twenty bucks, or something. Put a little light, like it will help out the the theft and all this stuff. And the other bicycles. Mm-hmm. You got me? Insured. They should be licensed, insured. Well, you know, make sure that they're they're yeah. equipped. Create some jobs there, for there a lot of people. There could be an enormous amount of revenue if, if things were done differently with regard well, to the bikes. I'm, I'm saying that, that Ted does have the, 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 the so-called resume from the standpoint he, he spent some time at the county, mm-hmm. he, sent, he spent some time at the bank as a treasurer aspect of it, and now he's the mayor aspect of it. When I looked at the rest of the folks, he really didn't have the deal. Mm-hmm. But he has all of the, the and you know, the guys, are, he's, he, he was well endowed, if you will, as far as his money is concerned. So... He can do anything he wants to do, and but the bottom line, he can't do it by himself. Right. We've got to be together on this piece, yeah. all of us. And, and the to... media, please get together. Quit yeah. jumping on this guy for a little frivolous stuff. Don't be interviewing at this time. Time for anything. Encourage him to go out and spend two weeks with his family, or a month with his family, yeah. so he can dot his eyes and cross his t's. Quit playing these games that he's the mayor. He is not the mayor of the city of Portland. Charlie Hale is the mayor of the city of Portland. Get on his back Mm -hmm. and ask him specifically, vet him out and say, okay, where are you now? What are you going to do? What's left to do? And what are you going to do about the homeless problem right now? It's on your your watch right now. Charlie, you understand what I'm saying? I'm calling you Charlie because you haven't done the job. You will be called mayor if he ever gets to that particular point. I mean, I I don't want to get caught up in that deal. (laughs) Don, keep me down, will you? Slow me down a little bit, will you? Okay. Open the doors or walk it. There you go. You got it. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, uh, and to, for those folks down on, on Foster Road, that's another big issue. That's big. Mm-hmm. The press yeah. needs to go back and vet that area again. Because the bottom line, those people need, those, that's a main thoroughfare yeah, aspect it of it. And they're trying to ruin those people almost like they're doing on Williams Avenue and whatever. So the bottom line is that they need to go and well, take that up. The media needs to do that. The, with regard to that Foster Road and the Springwater, the trail, it's just like a friend of mine, Thomas uh, Legg, has said, yeah. City Council doesn't really care about that because it doesn't impact any of them. Right, it impacts right. people that live in the area. Exactly. And they're not City Council members. Exactly. So City Council and Ted Wheeler have a lot of work to do, and he's inherited a huge problem. Oh, because oh. the issue is, number one, the incredible numbers of homeless people on the street oh. and the inequity that is uh, that is 
all around us yes. because the rents just keep oh, skyrocketing. It's crazy. And people and families are being evicted and the, the, the separation between the haves and the have-nots in Portland is <clears> growing <throat> wider every day. That needs to be addressed. Oh. And then the education piece. Let's not forget the education mm -hmm. piece. Yeah. Kids are failing here. Yes. No voc ed. Right. No voc ed. Right. Yeah. You know, and then we talk about the gang problem. These are just young people, nothing to do. Yeah. Wake up, folks. Okay. Yeah. Here's another thing you might enjoy when you get when you get on mm -hmm. our on, on our YouTube and subscribe. You can check out. We did a poll, just a recent poll, before we got came here to the show. We okay, did that basically. And these are some of the areas that they people were interested in. Just an independent poll, real quick. I'll be real quick because I got about two minutes. How wacko leftist Oregon has become voting for socialists? Give me a break. I mean, there were more people interested in the state issues than anywhere else. Taxation was another one. Tax, tax, taxation is theft. Issues facing rural Oregon, jobs, land grabbing, federal and regional. City of Portland, National, <laughs> President, Multnomah County, Eastern Oregon, Josephine County, politics. 100, 104, about 150 right now at this point in time. But the bottom line is that we're going we're gonna to be, i.e., the communicator, if you will, of this piece. And hopefully journalism will, will join us. If you will. That's really what we're trying to do because we really need help. We all need help for that matter. Mm -hmm. And I think we can have a, a beautiful city. Right, yeah. uh, an unracist city. Hopefully, of, hopefully we can do that. <laughs> it won't be called an all-white deal. Otherwise, I'll be get I'll be getting my sign out. You know, um, for those races, visit but don't stay. Well, it, I want to say that, <laughs> that that my new interest now. Visit, right? You like that? You like that? Oh, I like it, yeah. Visit but don't stay. Yeah. My new. If interest. you're a racist, visit but don't stay. Yeah. Don't come here. <laughs> don't, don't come out with this PTSD. Don't come out with mine. Well, we'll have a problem. My new interest as a writer is to um, write more articles about the hidden racism in Portland. Wow. That's my new interest. Well, and, and I have to say, I got into this, you know, a year ago, I wouldn't have thought I would be writing about this, but I got into it because I wanted to help Fred with his campaign. And I saw a lot of racism directed at him, and I was really offended by it. And that's what kind of has spurred Good. me along. We're going to do that. I'll be the co I'll be with you, co okay. author. Okay. And Don will be there too, the backup. Okay, fine. <laughs> Folks. This has been great, really, really has, and I hope you understand where I'm coming from. I mean, we, this is not fun and games aspect of it. I'm just as serious as you are. We all have to work together, right up front. We need it. Keep that racist stuff, keep that stuff out of the bound or whatever. We got to work together. We got a guy that's going in to, to be mayor, first part of the year, and we all have to be together. No man's an island. He can't do it all by himself. It's got to be all of us together. Okay, fine. With that note, hey, you have a good one, and think about what I'm saying, and get to, get to, get to Facebook. Oregon Voters Digest, YouTube, and subscribe. Take care. Have a good one.